Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to continue on our series on Kden Live use, going through the interface, going through how the different workspaces work. Today, we're going to look at how to apply effects. It's going to be awesome. Let's get to it. Okay, so once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learning and thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time, thank you for joining. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make the most of them. I do a lot of work also to build a community of learning so that we can share our experiences and help each other grow and become stronger, right? There's a larger group. <laughs> That's my hope. So I wanted to continue on with Kden Live, um, I've mentioned this a lot. We've been working through this over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've looked at the interface. We've looked at how to use the colorization properties, which are really awesome, by the way. Go watch that video. And I want to continue today on how to apply effects because there's a couple different principles that are pretty universal. I just wanted to jump through them so you can understand how that all works. Also, stick with me to the end because I'm going to try to demonstrate a speed ramping concept for KDN Live. It's it's not 100%, but it's a groundwork, and it could just be enough to accomplish that if you're trying to do that in KDN Live. I know I've been, so stay with me till then. All right, so starting off here in the editing workspace, uh, we went over workspaces in the interface video. I have some really basic footage that I shot here just to kind of have something to show. <laughs> I want to start by explaining there's two different areas to look at here. There's compositions, and these you can think of as more of, more of the transition between two cuts, two clips. That's compositions, and then there's effects, which would be enhancing individual clips by one way or another. They both follow the same basic ground rules, but one minor difference, and I'll go through that right now. These transitions, when they get dropped onto a clip, you can see how it becomes this kind of extra piece here on the bottom, which you can adjust independently of the clip, uh, the duration and such. If I click on that object over here in the effects panel, you can see the choices that go with that. If I were to just kind of scrub and play through there, you can see what's going on. It's a simple cross dissolve. Uh, so that's a transition effect. Different from that would be effects, which apply to individual clips. And a very common one used there would be transform. Um, I use this a lot to do kind of zoom in effects um, and things like that. And the properties over here, this long thing along the top there is the stretch of the clip. Uh, this is the very beginning. This is the very end. It automatically inserts a keyframe. And the keyframes are important because that determines the kind of movement, the kind of changes and progress the effect you applied will do. You can actually add in markers in the clip for these things to intensify or change or do things. All right, and to explain what I'm doing, all right, so I'm gonna pick a point midway through this cut, use the plus button to add a keyframe. It becomes a minus once you've done that. You can use the minus to remove it, very simple. Uh, these are to hop between your keyframes and uh, these we'll get to in a minute, but this is the basic principle here of how you add a keyframe. So for here, this is already a point that I intend to change. So I'm gonna make some simple things where I can add some rotation to it. You can see what that's doing on the screen. I could change the shape with numerical, with numbers, but it's actually really easy just to come up here for this particular effect and just manipulate it this way. I can hold the shift key and hold the aspect ratio, which is really cool. I can drag this around another way if I wanted to move it that way. I can also, if I hover to the right here, I can use these controls to back off. And then if I wanted to say drag it off the screen entirely, now I can kind of get that view of how that fits together. And I'll show you how this plays out now because it's already set to go. In fact, let me just pause that and zoom back in so you get the full benefit. Start from the beginning you can see how that's applying what I've done already. Now, it stops there because I haven't told it to do anything else uh, beyond that point, and you can see how the other clip just kind of comes in there because 
it assumes you want the background transparent. So it's already moving on to that next cut um, through the transparency of the other clip, if that makes sense. So that's the basic idea for this. Again, you could manipulate the X, uh, which is the horizontal, the Y, which is the vertical value uh, manually, if you're good with numbers, or if you wanted to synchronize these up with certain other kinds of movements, I've done that. Um, and to give you an example of what that looks like, let me clear off the slate and explain that better. So what I have done from time to time is, let's say at this point, I want to move in and get really close, but keep the same aspect ratio of the shot I've got. So I can pull out just so I can drag this better, holding shift while I drag a corner, which keeps the aspect ratio. And I'm just gonna position this where maybe this is the part I wanna see. All right, I'm gonna get to about here. I'm gonna add one more keyframe because I wanted to keep that position of zoom in where I was. And for the very, very end, I'm going to add one more. And for this, I'm going to reset the values back to zero and then the original aspect ratio, which for HD, which is what this is working in, is 1920 by 1080. And once I do that, that resets it back to fit perfectly within the frame that I had. That's why these can be very valuable if you want to bring that back to a common point or if you wanted to synchronize that again with another positioning um, that you've already used with other clips. That can be very, very useful just to tap in the numbers and you keep going. And then to also show you what's going on here, we did a zoom in effect there. The zoom completed and then it backs off again. All right. Now I mentioned I was going to get to these. These are different kinds of interpolation and a loose definition of that would be kind of like keyframing. It's the animated um, calculation between keyframes that you're using. And these are just the different uh, paths that you can apply to those keyframes that we've already injected. Um, linear is very, very constant. Uh, the motion completes and starts all at the same rate. Uh, discrete happens in intervals and in pockets in, in case that's the kind of movement you're looking for. And smooth is supposed to be a graduated application of where you start to where you end. Now, using clips this small, you really can't see the distinction. That's going to really make a difference over a longer term <laughs> effect. Um, so just other than understanding what they do, I could apply this here, but it's not going to look a lot different than what I've already shown you. The graduation is just so fast that it doesn't look that different from, say, the linear or even the discrete because the span of the effect is so short. Okay, but know that those options are there if you're going to be doing this over the longer term because that can have an impact over a long term effect. It, you can either graduate the movement or keep it smooth into the end um, or constant to the end, rather, excuse me, uh, depending on what kind of effect you're trying to achieve. So those are the different modes that you have there. All right. These are all pretty self-explanatory for what I'm doing for the transform effect. And those are going to be slightly different again for each kind of effect or, or transition that you're applying. So check those out as you do them. Um, there's a couple other different options about how you're going to move again, the transform and those are going to change depending on uh, what you apply. So this is the basic concept of what you see here. Uh, this is how you get rid of them. There's other generic controls about whether you want to stack them a certain way. Those are all up here. Um, and that can be helpful depending on how you want to organize the effects space. All right. So that's the basic concept behind applying effects and using them. Now, now that we understand that, I wanted to try to go into the concept of speed ramping because we talked about that in the very beginning. I just want to kind of give you a quick nugget of something that I've been working on. It is not true speed ramping, if I can say true, you know, speed ramping, because that really involves, again, a graduation of speed uh, between one to another that is actually incremented and then decremented to a compensate. It's not that, and I've been trying to pull apart Caden Live and see how to do that. There's a lot of discussion on forums about how to make this possible. The word from the developers right now is that it's not exactly doable because keyframing speed is a lot more difficult than it sounds uh, than it is in keyframing individual effects. I know they're aware of it, and I really hope they uh, build that into future releases. But for now, what you can do is you can break a clip into individual sections and then apply different speedings 
to each one of those. And that sounds tedious, but it actually does work. To give you a rough concept, if I, let's see, take the motion that I have from there to about there, I'm gonna make a cut. I'm gonna take this and if I right click it, I'm gonna go to speed. That's that's a control you won't find, by the way, in any of these adjustments. You have to right click it and go to change speed. I think there's also a way you can enable that up on the, um, the toolbars, but this is the fastest way I could find to get to it. <laughs> change the speed. And this is really cool. You can either use the slider or you can uh, use a numerical value. It is warning you here if you try to speed um, below the 100%, it actually stops you. The reason being is that it is detecting that to adjust the speed of this clip, it would have to grow this out into a clip that's already there. It won't let you do that. <laughs> so, I mean, the answer to that then would be just to drag the clip out of the way and then you can see, okay, well now I can now adjust speed either direction here. Um, so just some advice on minimum speed adjustment if you're gonna make it slow-mo. Uh, with HD footage, the recommended base I've heard for that is up to 20%. Below that, you really start to take notice of gaps because you can only simulate so many frames as you're slowing it down without um, starting to get some uh, degradation of quality in that. So 20% is the base of that. Although I generally recommend about 50 because that's a one a one and two frame difference. And that's very clean, very smooth. And that just seems to be a very magical place where the, the motion generated is very fluid. So up to 20%, but 50 is where I'd suggest you, you try to ride if you wanted to make slow-mo type stuff. We're gonna go the other direction though. We're gonna ramp this up to let's say 1000% because that's the kind of increment that speed ramping really works with. They are extreme adjustments to the speed between really slow, really fast, back in real time. That's the kind of play that goes on with speed ramping. So if we now put these together and I can do that because the gap is still where it is. I just made the first clip 1000% speed. Let's just see what happens and that that initial moment is very fast and then it returns back to a normal pace. Now, that can be hard to see in this, so what I've done is I've actually made kind of a little mini project here on the side, just so you can get a better look at this. And let's just take a quick look at this so you can see where this is going. I'm gonna make my workspace just a bit bigger. Here we go. Okay. So again, very simple approach. It's not the graduated speed, but you can kind of work through that because again, these are very extreme changes in speed. And there's, if you work this right and you work it with your soundtrack or your music, you can take away from the fact that it's not smoothly graduated, but again, edited cleverly, edited with the motion of what you're shooting, you can get, I'd say about 80% to the effect of the speed ramp. So. It's something to do in Kden Live. I know other tools can do this. I believe you can do it in Premiere. I believe you can do it in uh, DaVinci Resolve because those types of things are built in. It's not here yet, but this is a pretty close match. All right. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for spending your time with me in this video and thanks for hanging out this far. Don't hesitate to leave a comment, ask a question, and the framing of those are not just for me. I'm really emphasizing the importance of community of people. So ask away for the entire community. I want us to help each other and get comfortable helping each other and growing in our artistic experience. Consider giving me a thumbs up if this was eye-opening and illuminating and resonated with you. So that tells me what kind of things I should do in the future. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome, awesome pieces, the rest of this series and the other uh, future initiatives that we're gonna be doing on this channel. Thank you so much for participating in this channel, for being a part of it, for watching this content and supporting me that way. It really means the world to me just to see people getting value out of these videos. It is so much fun for me, but it's also so much more meaningful to give help to everybody else uh, looking for the same answers as I am. So again, thank you so much for joining in. Happy New Year, happy 2021. I'm so much looking forward to spending this year doing amazing things with you. Take care.